It's everywhere. You can't avoid it. The latest diet craze, I'm going gluten-free because I'm gluten intolerant. On the one side, you get idiots on the internet like this. So what happens is you're standing there and they say, oh, I don't actually eat gluten. And on the other side, I am terrified of eating gluten. I have celiac disease. I am also lactose intolerant. It's definitely time for another deep dive into the science behind this very relevant question. Is gluten intolerance a thing? If you've been around anybody struggling with their gut health, I'm sure you've heard of something called gluten intolerance. People who claim to be gluten intolerant say that after they consume a product that has gluten in it, they just don't feel good. They say they struggle with abdominal pain, joint pain, fatigue, nausea, skin rashes, and so on. That's a pretty wide range of symptoms from just eating gluten. Hmm. I don't know. That also sounds a lot like systemic inflammation to me. No, I needed to dig deeper. More backstory is needed. Much more science. I had to go back in time way before gluten was even known to exist. Okay, wait, no, <laughs> not that far. Let's stop somewhere in the civilized ages, please. Perfect. Right after the Second World War, during the well-known winter of starvation, something very interesting happened. A doctor was trying to solve extreme gut health issues some of the children in the Netherlands were having. During this same time, common foods like bread became unavailable. And miraculously, all of the children became healthy. They got relief from their disruptive gut symptoms. Sometime later, Swedish relief missions brought bread back again. And what do you know? All the symptoms returned. The doctor quickly realized that what the children was actually struggling with was a condition we now know as celiac disease. And the main contributing factor that triggers this disease to inflame the gut is, you guessed it, gluten. That's right, a single molecule can wreak havoc in your digestive system if everything down there isn't as it should be. Celiac disease is a serious condition, but luckily we have medical tests that can 100% confirm whether you have it or not. And in most cases, people who self-diagnose themselves with gluten intolerance don't have celiac disease. These same people, however, say that following a gluten-free diet resolved all their issues. No more symptoms, no more bloatedness, no more irritable bowel, no more skin rashes, no more brain fog, nothing. So this begs the question, if gluten intolerance is made up, how come so many of these people's issues got resolved with a gluten-free diet? Those same doctors headed into the labs and tore the gluten molecule apart. They investigated everything. How it gets broken down in the gut, the DNA, the genes that get associated with these gluten disruptions in the gut, everything. When digested, gluten gets broken down by an enzyme called tissue transglutaminase. It gets broken down into glutenin and gliadin. What you must know about these molecules is that they are protein molecules. And protein is an extremely important building block for the body. Protein gets used to synthesize tissue, recover cellular structures, and so much more. The body handles glutenin pretty well. We have pathways that take it up and use it. But for some reason, gliadin isn't handled very well in the body. Scientists found that not only does part of the gliadin molecule not get used by the body, it's seen as a pathogen, basically a foreign object, and the body tries to get rid of it as soon as it enters the gut. This getting rid of process is called inflammation. The inflammatory process is the culprit behind the swelling, the pain, the gut discomfort, and all of the other systemic disorders that come with it. Now get this, those scientists at the Institute for Celiac Disease found that this reaction doesn't only take place in people who have gluten-related bowel disruptions, but also in the rest of the population. That's right, turns out humans as a species can't really handle gluten that well. Well, the gliadin part at least. I'm sure you're thinking by now that then technically everybody should be gluten intolerant and everybody should be struggling with their gut health, right? Wrong. Here's why some people genuinely do struggle with gluten intolerance and the related symptoms and others don't. In the more recent years, the gluten in our products has changed. A lot. It's also added as a form of fortification, which is when companies add minerals and vitamins and nutrients to everyday products in order to help promote the health of society. This is needed, especially in third world countries. The bigger problem, however, isn't that we're adding more gluten to our products. It's that our products, let's take bread for example, doesn't go through a proper cycle of fermentation anymore. 
we now add things like instant yeast. So within an hour, we go from flour to freshly baked bread on the shelf and off it goes. All these changes to the production of our food now has a much bigger impact on our gut health than many years ago. That's why people struggle with gluten sensitivity now more than ever before. And let's face it, as good as genetically modified foods are, they just aren't the same as they were hundreds of years ago. And it would be pretty naive to think that we didn't mess up some of the modifications somewhere along the line. Yes, these foods are now more drought resistant and yield much better harvests. The unfair reality is some people's bodies are much better equipped to handle this inflammatory reaction. People who have well-balanced diets, high in antioxidants, and who have low stress levels, for example, are much better equipped to quickly calm down this inflammatory response. Therefore, they don't struggle as much with gluten-related side effects, but that doesn't count for the rest of us. The society we live in today just doesn't lend itself to a low-stress lifestyle. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure that genetic components play a much bigger role in some people's ability to keep the inflammation at bay. That being said, decreasing your gluten intake can only be good for you. For most people, this lifestyle and dietary change will translate into so many more healthy habits being formed. Like decreasing simple sugar intake, simply eating less high carb junk. You can almost never get a carbohydrate without getting gluten along with it. And oftentimes when people cut out the gluten, they also decrease on the carbohydrate intake. Refined carbs spike your blood sugar, and this leads to an insulin response. And eventually, if this happens enough times, it can lead to extreme insulin resistance, which is basically pre-diabetics waiting around the corner. At the end of the day, it's really important to know that gluten intolerance is a real thing, and people really do struggle with gluten-related bowel discomfort. And doing a small self-experiment before having yourself tested for something more serious like celiac disease can be beneficial. I'd love to go on about this topic and talk about specific food gluten intolerant people should avoid and add, but this video has been a mouthful. I will make another video on this topic soon. Definitely click on the subscribe button below if you're interested in such a video. And also remember that I do share daily health tips on my Instagram, at fitbystefan. I'll leave the link in the description below. Coolness, thanks for watching and I really hope you got some value from this video. Good luck with your gut health. If you're currently struggling, there is a solution. Okay, I'll see you in the next video, Mondays and Wednesdays now. Cheers.